Welcome to the Indianapolis franchise. We are nearing the September call-ups here in season number two, and it has been actually a very surprising year. We were expecting to be in the middle of a full rebuild, and even though we are in the rebuild, we didn't expect to be this good. You have to credit some guys like Jacob McDonald, the 18-year-old second round pick of last year who has been amazing as a relief pitcher in 25 innings a 0.91 whip man like he is crazy good so far this season and then Jalen Beeks who we acquired for Williams Estadio he is also off to a great start with his career with the Indianapolis Arrows so for the first time in this series, we will give an in-season extension to Jalen Beeks. I think this is a pretty sure thing. Looking at his history the last five years, I mean, he's never been above a, you know, 1.2 whip even. And we offer him a two-year extension, and he will accept that. I am very, very happy about that. So he is locked up for the next two years after this one. But today's episode is all about pitching because we have a very, very good pitching prospect now in Babe Miller. He immediately goes to the top of our prospect list as far as pitchers goes. He is number two ranked in the organization behind Ray Gonzalez. And Babe Miller is pitching very, very well at AAA. Let's just check him out versus the Iowa Cubs. Here, the first batter he faces, though, this is going to be a hit to center field. This is going to get all the way back to the warning track and a leadoff double off of Bay Miller. Well, not the start that we were imagining here for uh, Miller at the Omaha Storm Chasers as he faces the second batter of the game. This is going to be a ground ball to second base and it will be a uh, just a uh, sacrifice ground ball, I guess you can say. Bryce Ball to the plate, and he goes up the middle, and two hits in the first three batters. It is 1-0 here for the Iowa Cubs. So let's see if Bay Miller can settle down a little bit. Here's a deep fly ball to left field. This one back at the wall and will be run down. Bay Miller's hit it, getting hit pretty well so far in the first inning. David Bodie at the AAA level, he hits one to second base and one run surrendered here in the first inning by Bay Miller as he move on to the second. Here is Steven Benitez at the AAA level. He was our third round draft pick and I expected him to be moved up late and he turns on one. This one's deep to left field. Just foul. 1.4 feet outside the foul pole and he squares one up this time to the left center gap but it will just be run down Benitez has a lot of power from uh, that shortstop position which is one thing I really like about him he, he is a guy that has a really good arm he's a decent fielder but he's a guy that I think has high potential at the plate Bay Miller gets settled down though in the third inning with two straight strikeouts there on to the top of the fourth inning this time inside slider and that's a strike three called David Bodie goes down looking bringing up Tucker Barnhart as you can see he's facing MLB level hitting and he's getting through four now with two outs ground ball in the hole look at Benitez a backhand and a long throw to first and he gets the runner those are the type of plays we have to see from our young guys to see if they are ready for the show Benitez up, up in the bottom of the fourth inning for his second at bat. This one's a low pitch, and he crushes this one. Deep to left field, it's gone. Steven Benitez out of the University of Miami. He goes deep, and he ties this ball game up. That's his ninth home run of the year, 448. He absolutely crushed that pitch. And wow, look at that. 106 exit velo. It's a 1 1 game. Bay Miller still on the mound here in the fifth inning. He's dealing. He settled down quite a bit since that first inning. It may have been just jitters here in his first start with the Storm Chasers. And there is another strikeout. He's on to the sixth inning, and nobody has really gotten a piece of him at all. Here's a ground ball to first, and it could be two. Benitez with a strong throw over to first. 
But safe at first, two outs now facing Tucker Barnhart again, and he strikes him out for the second time today. An inside changeup, you see he's locating his pitch as well. He's in, into the seventh inning now. A cut fastball on the outside half, and that is another strikeout. This could be his last batter of the game, 120 pitches. Fly ball to left field. This one's caught. An excellent outing here for Babe Miller. Maybe he uh, doesn't really start out well, but you know what? He finished strong. Jacob Wallace into the game. Remember, Jacob Wallace was our minor league pitcher of the year last year, so he had a pretty good boost. He got plus one to all of his attributes, and he got a boost of potential up to 75 because he was below that 75 threshold. Here is David Bodie at the plate. He swings and misses as well. And Tucker Barnhart one more time. Let's see if he can get the sombrero with strikeouts. And he will. Strike three. And the Omaha Storm Chasers win this one 3-1. to one. Babe Miller actually does get the win because we scored a couple of runs there in the seventh before we pulled them. And he ends up being player of the game here. Seven innings pitch, four hits given up, ten strikeouts in this game for Babe Miller. After that first inning, I mean, he barely let a base runner on. He was that good. You can already see the potential with him. He's going to be a very, very strong pitcher at the MLB level. So back to the MLB level as we get through the month of August to the beginning of September for the call-ups. Here is Lane Thomas, the other acquisition we had here at the deadline. And he is 3-for-3 three three in this game versus the Mets with a chance to hit for the cycle. He needs a double. Here he gets two chances at the end of this game into extras. This one's just a ground ball to second base. Lane Thomas is a guy that has excellent speed in the outfield, a great arm as well. But he's hitting very, very well this year, way better than he's been hitting in the past seasons. But here you see he can't get a hit to save his life here after starting the game three for three. Now he's three for six. He's got seven at-bats in this one and swings that one out of the zone. This one's just a pop-up to first base. He gets four opportunities to hit a double. Cannot do it. He goes three for seven in this game versus the Mets. We do end up winning this game, though, but uh, I really wanted to get that double with Lane Thomas. If we get through the month of August, you can just see how we're doing here. We're actually losing a lot of games in the middle of this month, and obviously our youth is going to show. But here's Paulo Reyes here versus the Reds, trying to come back in the top of the ninth. He swings that one out of the zone. Alexis Diaz on the mound trying to get the save here for the Reds. Another inside slider versus Seth Beer. And now Lane Thomas up to the plate. 0-2 pitch. Outside slider. And we swing at three bad pitches right there. Strike three. Not how you want to end the game right there, but we do lose to the Cincinnati Reds here at the end of the season. But a big reason why I highlighted that game is because coming out of it, Jordan Montgomery has a fractured arm, which will end his season. So we have really two starters now at the MLB level who have season-ending injuries. Jordan Montgomery will be done so we just get to September, and just so that we can move up another pitcher, and that's going to be obviously Babe Miller. We can just see there in the last month of the season, or last week of the season, I should say, we won four of six. So we are still, like, really, really competitive at this point. But Babe Miller is going to get moved up. He is now 77 overall. I was thinking about looking at Ray Gonzalez, but Steven Benitez I really, really like. I need to see what he can do versus MLB pitching. So he's going to get moved up here in preparation for next season to see, you know, how he is going to compete. He's got a chance to start at either short or third. Uh, we'll see how second base goes. Ian Happ is still the second baseman right now. He could move over to center. That is a possibility. So I'm not exactly sure, but I, I at least need to see how Benitez can hit versus MLB pitching. You're going to see a really nice uh, battle in spring training with Ray Gonzalez, Steven Benitez, Leover Piguero, and then also Connor Weakman for the middle infield, I guess the corner infield as well. So it's going to be interesting going into next year, seeing who's going to be the starters because we're going to have a lot of young guys. I don't think we would sign a middle infielder unless somebody you know that we really, really want is there. I'm thinking that in the offseason, we're going to go after pitching for sure. That's going to be the number one priority. 
and then possibly picking up an outfielder because our corner outfield isn't the greatest right now. We have obviously uh, Romel Tapia and Lane Thomas, but we definitely need somebody else as well. Then in center, who's going to be the center fielder? Is it going to be Ian Happ? Is it going to be Pat Washington? Is it going to be somebody else? We'll have to see. We're going up against the Chicago White Sox, who have Orlando Quintana already at the MLB level. So he goes straight to the MLB after getting drafted in season one. He played a, actually a couple months at AAA before getting moved up. But now he is there, so we will face him for the first time in the series. Remember, we chose between him and Ray Gonzalez for the first-year player draft. Here is Ian Happ to lead off this game. He hits one deep to right field. That one sounded good off the bat but it will just be a fly out to deep right field. So far this season, Ian Happ is our leader in the clubhouse, hitting 306. The average is a little lower than what you saw last episode. But Paulo Reyes is still the front runner for Rookie of the Year, hitting 252 in that three spot. And here he comes up to the plate now. He gets one over the middle, and he hits one to the right side. That one gets through the infield. And a two-out single here for Paulo Reyes. Reyes has turned into our best hitter so far this season as that brings up Seth Beer. Ground ball to second, and it will be a ground out. And the White Sox obviously have Quintana, so we will see him today. Here is Babe Miller in his debut at the MLB level facing Tim Anderson. This one will be down the right field line, and it will be a double here to start off this game for the White Sox. And now the White Sox are in sort of a rebuild. I think this is a team that is still trying to compete, but their rebuilding strategy is normal right now. But I guess we'll see what trades they end up making. Because remember, they traded Luis Robert at the end of the trade deadline episode, but then the save messed up, so that trade didn't go through. As Quintana comes up and he strikes out for his first at-bat versus Bay Miller. How ironic. Luis Robert to the plate now in that three spot. He will swing and miss at the outside changeup. And Babe Miller with two strikeouts here in the first inning. That brings up Salvador Perez to the plate. And he is just going to look at that low slider in the zone. Three strikeouts here for Babe Miller. Remember, with the storm changes, he had 10 strikeouts in that game earlier. On to the bottom of the second inning. Here is Kerry Carpenter. He hits one hard up the middle. Easy ball for Ian Hatt, bringing up Dylan Carlson, who they acquired at the deadline as well. And that one will be an out at first base. Jonathan Scope at the plate hits one well to left field, but Romel Tapia will get to that fly ball. Steven Benitez, his debut at the MLB level versus the White Sox, facing Davis Martin, outside slider. And we checked our swing. I don't know why Benitez went around like that. And that will be his first strikeout of his MLB career. Jack Sawinski, same thing. I mean, we checked our swing. I don't know why they're checking so hard. But now Ian Happ to the plate now with two outs. Here he gets an outside slider. He will walk. So now we have a man on first base here in the top of our lineup here at the plate. Romel Tapia, 0 for 1 today. He hits one well to center field. That one's going to get down. Ian Happ is going to try to get to third on this one. A strong throw from Luis Robert will not be in time. And now we have runners on the corners here with the rookie of the year front runner Paulo Reyes at the plate now. A 2-1 pitch. This one's driven deep to left field. It's gone. Paulo Reyes, a three-run home run, and he will give us the lead here on the road versus a team that could probably be our biggest rival in this series. Who knows? We'll see how they end up rebuilding with their young guys as well. Chase DeLauder into hit now versus Bay Miller to start the third inning. He starts it out with a leadoff single. Bringing up Estevan Perez. Hit down the third baseline. Benitez playing third today. Cannot get to that one. I want to try him out at third base to see how he did. I do have Liervo. Liervo. Wow. Liervo. I can't even say his name. Peguero at shortstop. Is that's going to bring up Tim Anderson at the play as the top of the lineup comes up. And that is going to be caught by Ian Happ. Orlando Quintana at the plate now, who's actually pretty hitting pretty well this year. He hits a ground ball to first. Beer to short. 
on to first. It's a double play. So Babe Miller pitching out of a little bit of a jam there. That's a good sign going forward. Definitely going to be in a little bit more of those here with the arrows. As that brings up Benitez here in the bottom of the fifth inning as they go to their bullpen and bring in Mena to, to pitch. And Steven Benitez just straight up missed on that hanger of a curveball. That brings up Jack Sawinski. He tries to get away with it again, but that one will be poked to center field. Bad throw in the second, but with Sawinski, will stay on the bag. Ian Happ to the plate now. 0 for 1 day so far. And he hits one to left field. That one gets down. And now we have runners on first and second here. One out. Romel Tapia to the plate now. He hits one well to right field, but that one will be a laser. But look at the speed right here as Sawinski gets all the way over to third. And now we have runners out in the corners here. It's going to be Paulo Reyes again. He hits one well to left field. That one gets down. Another RBI for Reyes. He has all four today. And it's a three for three game here for Reyes. Having himself an evening. Seth Beer in that four spot. He comes up and he continues to hit parade. That one will get all the way to the gap. And it's a 6 nothing game for the Arrows here on the road. How about this for Babe Miller's first outing? We give him six runs of insurance. I mean, that is excellent there. That's a way to pick up your young guy and give him some confidence. As the White Sox go to the bullpen, they bring in Jimmy Lambert. And he will face Lane Thomas. Can we continue this, this hitting? 3-2 pitch. This one is a short fly ball to right center. But Luis Robert covering a lot of ground in center field gets to that one. Tim Anderson up in the sixth inning. And it looks like Babe Miller, much like the AAA outing, he got hit well in the first inning. After that, he hasn't gotten touched. Here's Quintana. 0 for 3 day for him. A ground ball to first base. And that one will be stepped on the back by Babe Miller. Luis Roberts to the plate now. 95 pitches in this game. And a strike three swinging on Luis Robert. Babe Miller has been excellent so far in this episode. On to the top of the ninth inning. Matt Foster in the pitch. This one's going to be hit deep to left center field by Ian Happ. And it gets all the way to the wall. Happ has been tearing the cover off of the ball. He rounds second hard. Heads to third with a stand-up double. Actually, he got down. But still a 7-0 game here on the road in Babe Miller's debut. We move on to the bottom of the ninth inning. Now a 7-1 game. Jalen Beeks in the pitch. New contract extension. And that will be the last out of the game. The Arrows win this one 7-1 in dominant fashion, to be honest with you. And we get the victory here versus one of our rivals in this series. Paulo Reyes goes four for five. A huge day for him. How about Jack Sawinski getting moved up here for this game? He goes three for four. So a very good, you know, comeback outing for him. Remember, he's been hurt for a lot of the year, but he started out hitting below 200 at the MLB level. We moved him down. Then he started hitting just as bad at AAA. So good to see him hitting well. We actually end up sweeping the Chicago White Sox on the road. Then we go home to play Miami. They beat us two of three. And now we end up here at the beginning of September. And we're probably going to end it here with gameplay because I want to face Clayton Kershaw with the Yankees. I think that would be like a fun matchup. So I will start that game next episode. And we will conclude the regular season as well. We decide to make a couple of more moves, moving up Josh Brody. I want to see him in some innings. I want to make sure that I stay under that 50-inning rookie threshold so that Babe Miller and Josh Brody both have that eligibility for last year. So Brody's going to get a couple starts. Babe Miller's probably going to get one or two more starts. That's about it for the year. And we're going to go into next year really riding it out with these young guys and really figure out what we have in the rotation. So that's going to do it next episode will be the season finale and probably the episode where i have you guys submit your recruits as well so stay tuned for that one but hope you guys enjoyed it babe miller is going to be the future stay tuned let's get it I like let's go me. I got time to get it.
So my car's a tenny Dancing with the devil, I don't bargain with it Bobbing in a dash and the stick is with it And I hit the 4-5 on the west side But I'm from the east side This how we slide, this how we ride, yeah.